Good evening ladies and gentlemen. Finally the rain has stopped pounding down on my 35 square meters of glorious gym empire. So we can talk. Just excuse the creaky chair. It's old and poorly put together, a bit like me. Anyway, so first Q&A. Jason asks, how about a top 10 strength training mistakes you've seen? You want me to think about all the things I've seen people do wrong in 10, 20 or 30 years, Jason. That's what this is for. It's a lot of years, Jason. And it could be a hell of a lot of talks. But let's keep it to a few to start with. The biggest mistake that anyone makes is just their consistency. Um, if you think about it, someone who's considered pretty consistent at the gym is coming maybe 75, 80% of the time. And we think that's, if they can do that, we think that's pretty good. But imagine that in the workplace. Somebody comes 75, 80% of their work days. In other words, about one day a week, they ring up the boss and say, I'm a bit tired today. Had a big night. Not feeling too well. Got this little thing with my shoulder. Or, uh, my cousins come to visit and we're going to have lunch today instead. I'm not going to come to work today. We're just going to have lunch. How well will that person's career go, do you think? Now, that's not to say that everyone needs to uh, uh, treat the gym like a full-time job. It is to say that those who do treat it like a full-time job will get the results that you see in people who do fitness as a full-time job, the fitness models and the top athletes and so on. In order to have any chance of something like that, you do have to treat it like a full-time job. If you give it mediocre commitment, you're going to get mediocre results. You know, um, to, to squat 100 kgs does not take vast commitment. To squat 200 kgs does. And certainly to squat 300 kgs, well, it's big commitment, big talent, and maybe some big juicing too. But, so if you're happy with those sorts of results, that's fine. It's your life. You spend it as you wish. But nonetheless, the more you show up, the better results you're likely to get. Um, so next to that, whether you do front squat or back squat or you do um, barbells or Zumba, um, doesn't really matter. You know, or three sets of 10 or five sets. It doesn't really matter. You know, just did you show up and do something? So, consistency. The second mistake really is um, knowing only A and B. Uh, this is a nice one I stole from Dan John. Uh, trainers, we're kind of like taxi drivers. You ring us up and tell us where you are and where you'd like to go to, and we find the quickest, safest, and most effective uh, route between the two places. The problem is that everyone knows just one of these two. Your top athletes are, are very clear on B. You know, Tokyo 2020, I'm going to be up there on the podium. And you say, yes, that's great, but you've just had a knee reconstruction. And they say, yeah, but 2020, the podium, man, I'm going to be there. So they're very clear on where they want to go, but they're not clear on where they are now. That's, that's your, you know, your athletic mentality. The flip side of that is the general gym goer, the general population client. Um, they're, the, they're the reverse. This. What's this? I hate this. Or, you know, this. I don't like this. Or uh, my back hurts. Or... Um, 
um, or my knee hurts from that knee reconstruction, uh, or my husband won't touch me, or something. I heard heartbreaking than once. The general population person is very clear on where they are now, but they've got no idea where they want to be. So you're like, okay, that's where, where do you want to go? Well, not here. So it's like the taxi driver getting a call from someone who's in, you know, King's Cross at two o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night, and everyone else is pissed and getting into brawls. And uh, where do you want to go? Well, I don't want to be here. So that's why you get in fitness a lot of, well, follow that car. That's, this is what that celebrity is doing, so let's just follow him. You know, they're not very clear on where they want to be. So that's the difficulty that we as trainers face, that people are very clear on A or very clear on B but have no idea about the other. So it makes it kind of hard for us to map out a route between the two. If you're able to get a better grasp on both those things, on where you are now and where you want to be, it makes everyone's life much simpler and easier. Probably because of that lack of clarity about A and B, you get the third problem, which is people have no program. You know, they just, they go into the gym and they faff about randomly. This is a, it's a classic thing that we see, um, the, the person going in the gym, they, they don't have a journal. If they don't have a journal, we know that they don't have a plan. If they don't have a plan, we know they're not really going anywhere. So, be consistent, know where you are, where you want to go to, and have a, uh, you know, a solid plan for that. And if the plan doesn't work, that's fine. Toss it out. Do something different. But stick to it long enough to find out if it works or not. The fourth problem is just spending too much time on the internet. Nowadays we have too many options, you know, um, anyone over probably 35 or so would remember um, VCR stores or DVD stores and how you could go in there and there were 10,000 different movies and you'd walk around for 45 minutes and come out with nothing. But on the other hand, you go to a mate's place and he's got, you know, like six on the shelf and you take 30 seconds to choose one and it's all right. You know, it may not be the greatest movie ever, but it's all right. It's quite watchable. Nowadays, because of the internet, we have so many options. You know, when I started many eons ago in this stuff, we just had the magazines, you know, Flex magazine and, and um, you know, Muscle and Fitness and all these sorts of things. Um, and they came out once a month. So, yeah, you could get different ideas all the time, but one a month. So at least you tried it for a month to see if it worked or not. But now with the internet, you can try a new, different, stupid thing every five minutes. I can't tell you how many guys I've had wander into the gym and say, oh, well, this program we've got is pretty good. I'm feeling good. I'm making good progress. All those aches and pains are going. But I was watching this YouTube video with Louis Simmons, and he said... And Too many options. That's the internet. The best thing that many people could do is just choose some program randomly and switch off the internet for 30 days and, and just do it. Go hard on that and, and find out if it works. So that's four. You know, consistency, only knowing your A and your B, uh, having no program at all and too much time in the internet. That's four. We can do another 400 another time, I suppose. Uh, next question. Uh, Aidan asks, I'd be interested in your experiences with athletes that cross-train endurance heavy sports concurrently with strength training. And he also mentions MMA. I know they definitely don't play well, but... Aidan, you answered your own question, mate. I know they definitely don't play well. When a man chases two rabbits, he goes hungry. It just doesn't work. 
to do 10 things at once. Uh, whatever CrossFit tells you, it just doesn't work. Uh, I had this friend, Mike, who um, he had a goal that he was going to do a powerlifting competition, a bodybuilding competition, and a marathon, all within 12 month period. And he did it. You know, his theory was, oh, I'll do the powerlifting, it'll bolt me up, then I'll just cut like a madman for six months and do the bodybuilding competition, then I'll stop lifting and then go for lots of runs and I'll do the marathon. And, you know, he did it. He did the three competitions. But in powerlifting, he, you know, totaled 400, a body weight of 85 or 90 or something, and um, in the bodybuilding competition, he came 10th out of 12 at the state level. Um, and uh, in the marathon, he did, I think, 4 hours 20, 4 hours 30, something like that. In other words, he was mediocre at three different things. So, you know, that's if you do it consecutively over a 12 month period, you can be mediocre at three different things. And if you try to do all three in one week, you just injure yourself. You know? So really you have to decide uh, what is your priority and spend 80% of your time on that. So if you're doing some sort of combat art, just do whatever you, the coach tells you. That's well, whatever the sport is, jujitsu, tennis, whatever. Just do whatever the fuck the, the sports coach tells you. If you're doing strength or you're doing cardio or whatever, follow some sensible plan, but 80% of your training time spend on that. And the other 30%, uh, 20% of your time is just play. Just have fun doing whatever else you're doing. So if you're strength training, spend 80% of your, your training sessions on strength. The other 20% of the time, do whatever you like. Just don't injure yourself. If you're doing endurance training, spend 80% of your time on endurance training. The rest of the time, do whatever you like. Just don't injure yourself. And so on. It just doesn't work to do 10 things at once. You can do 10 things in a row, and then you'll be mediocre at them. And if you're happy with that, okay, great. Just like if you're happy with mediocre results from mediocre consistency, great. But recognize that. Have a firm grasp on that, on, on what's happening there. But for God's sake, don't try to do all, you know, three things at once. Uh, you'll just, you'll bust yourself up. You, uh, in Aiden's case, you know, you're a young guy, so you, you're pretty resilient. Um, but most people are just going to wreck themselves really quickly. So uh, don't do it. Pick one thing, get good at it, then try something else. Do it like 12 months or something. Like no. um, what else? Uh, Patrick asks, do the random goofy exercises that Instagram models ever have a place in a program? Uh, no. No. The purpose of those, the goofy shit that you see on Instagram is to get views, it's to entertain people. Okay, it's, um, it, you know, the, the training that you see on Instagram has the same relation to real training as, uh, you know, married at first sight has to marriage counselling. You know, it's just it's just a clusterfuck to entertain you. Because um, what it comes down to is that there are thousands upon thousands of people putting pictures of their ass on Instagram, and there's only so many times you can watch somebody squatting, pressing, or deadlifting before you get bored with it. 